Good morning and welcome to the Vineyard Church of God in sunny Central Florida. Welcome to have you. We're glad to have you back in God's house this morning. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the salvation for the lost, uh, which there are lots, there are multitudes of the lost out there. Uh, we're going to be reading out of James um, and other parts of the Bible as well, but starting out with James chapter 5. So if you want to get your Bibles turned there, verses 19 and 20 of what we're going to be looking at. I also want to remind you that uh, if you haven't done it already, uh, after this message, give us, give us a thumbs up. You know, if you like us, give us a thumbs up, which I, I pray that you do because it is God's word. And also hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you can receive the, uh, the notifications of our sermons weekly as they, they come out. Uh, and you can also share and bless with others that, that you know that you have on your, uh, your phones or, you know, uh, anybody that, that you know that you can uh, send it to that, that needs it, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and open up with a word of prayer this morning. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to come back into your house to praise and worship and glorify you freely. And we pray, Father God, that you forgive us of our sins, Lord Jesus, and that you cleanse us from all unrighteousness, that you create in us a clean heart, renew a right spirit within us. We give you many thanks, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your sacrifice for our sins. You didn't have to do it, but you did it. You took the cup that, that Father God gave you, and you went with it to save us throughout eternity, that we could have a place in heaven with you. We ask this in your mighty name, that today, Father God, that it be your word that comes out of my lips and not my own, that it be edifying to your body, that it increase your kingdom. It's not about us. It's about you. We pray this in your mighty name. Amen. Um, like I said, salvation for the lost, and there are lots of lost out there, more than, than we can fathom. Um, we're reading out of James chapter 5 verses 19 and 20. This is helping a sinner's brother, okay, which we are all brothers in Christ. When we accept Jesus Christ in our hearts, we become a member of God's family. Now it says, brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. So as we pray for other people, other sinners, even the, the, the Christians who have backslidden, we're all sinners, all right? But we bring them back to the Lord. It covers a multitude of sins. You are, are welcomed back with open arms into the family of God. Now, every Christian should work with all his might, all of his might, for the salvation of the lost. There is something seriously wrong with any professed Christian who is not working constantly and working hard to get men to forsake sin and to accept Jesus. Such a person is fearfully backslidden. One of the most important marks of a true satisfactory Christian appearance or experience is an earnest desire to see others saved and a constant effort to the end of that sin, to bring them in. Amen. Let's go to Luke chapter 19, verse 10, where he says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. And I want you to remember that uh, throughout this, uh, this sermon here, because we're going to bring it back at the end in, in a different way to where you can look at it in your own personal life. Uh, but for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. That was his purpose, is to bring all the sinners of the world in to accept him and to accept God the Father. Now, uh, there's going to be two things we're going to say. Why? First, first we're going to work on why. Why do we do this? Why every Christian should work with all his might for the salvation of the lost. Why do we do this? Well, first of all, it's because God is glorified by the salvation of the lost. He glorifies in this. Nothing glorifies God more than the conversion of a sinner. In John 17, 4, he writes, I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And this is Jesus talking. 
He's speaking to God and he says, I have glorified you. We glorify God all the time. He is the only one worthy of honor and glory and power and praise. He is the only one. And he says, I have finished the work which you've given me to do. Okay. Now, John 3, 16, we hear it also. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We have to believe on Jesus Christ for what he has done and what he continues to do in our lives. Amen. Uh, also, every Christian should work with all his might for the salvation of the lost because God has commanded us to do this work. He has commanded us to do it. If you are to be like Jesus Christ, then we must also seek and to save that which is lost. We have to seek and save the lost. Jesus is a part of our life. We mimic ourselves after him. Just like uh, you know, in, in, in the mirror, we look at Jesus and we, we transform ourselves from glory to glory. We are becoming more like him. And to be like Jesus is to replicate what he did. And he came to seek and save those that are lost. So we should be the ones doing the same thing. Now, why? Why do we do this? Okay, every Christian should work with all his might for the salvation of the lost because God has commanded it. But every Christian should work with all his might because of love to them. We need to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. And everybody out there is our neighbor. I mean, have you ever walked outside and actually walked over to your next door neighbors, any of them, and spoke to them and, and, you, and just talked to them, carried on a conversation and brought up Jesus Christ, okay? Um, those are your neighbors, yes, but it's also anyone that you meet. You're walking down the road, people passing you by. Those are your neighbors. Everybody that's next to you is your neighbor, and you have to love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you're sitting in church and you're sitting next to somebody on right, left, front, back, those are your neighbors. Talk to them. Amen. So that's what he's getting at is that we have to seek and save that which was lost. Okay. Whether we're at the store, at work, um, playing, you know, whatever it is that, that we do, football games, whatever it is that, that you like to do, speak about Jesus Christ. Always lift them up. Edify the body. Okay, and every Christian should work with all his might because of that love. It's an awful thing to think of what it means to be lost. And not just lost here on earth, but to lose someone in heaven to where you will never see them. You know, you go to heaven, they go to hell. Okay, that's the only two places. And, you know, when they're lost, they're, they're lost. They, they don't come back. So it's an awful thing to think of what it means to be lost now, okay, to say nothing of what it means to be lost in the hereafter. Um, I, I don't know about you, but I would like to see everybody in heaven, you know, and have it heaven, you know, because in heaven everything is good and it's all peace. There's no, no crying, no, no fear, no sorrow, no pain, no anger. You know, it, it is all great and glorious. It's good. All right. So that's where I want to be. And that's where I'd like to see you. I'd like to see everybody. Everybody in here, I'd like to see you there. Okay. Now, what can we do for others? You know, life saving them from, uh, from, from sin and from its consequences. How our hearts are stirred up when we hear of the millions of bodies that are starving in India and elsewhere, okay? They're starving all over the, this planet. Okay, now I know that we're supposed to go out and we're supposed to, to feed the hungry and, and clothe the naked, and, you know, to, to be there for the orphans and the widows. We're supposed to be there for them. But think of the importance, okay? They're starving, you know, there and elsewhere, but what is this to millions whose souls are starving? who are stuck in sin on that sin cycle and they just can't get out of it, okay? We are the ones that can put a stop to that sin cycle just by saying the words to, to plant that seed in their heart and let the Lord take over and watch it grow, all right? 
who are in sin away from God and without Christ, those are the people that we need to meet up with, to, to speak to, to come in contact with. Those are the people that God is putting in our path every day. And it's, it, it's all up to you. It's your choice whether you're going to be like the, you know, the, the Jew and the Gentile, you know, as a, the Gentile's on the side of the road and, and he's all beat up and bloody and everything. And he's just laying there helpless. But the Jews don't mix and mingle with the Gentiles. So the Jewish people walk around him and just go on their way as if he's not even there. Okay, we don't need to do that. The, you know, sinners, we hate the sin. We love the sinner. Okay, we love God's creation. He is our neighbor. And so we need to do all we can to come forward and to plant that seed of God inside their life, that love, that hope, that faith, you know, so God can show his grace to them. And, you know, eventually they accept Jesus Christ and they have the salvation. Amen. That's what we want. We want to increase God's kingdom. Okay. It's far better to save one perishing soul than to save 10 million starving bodies. Because with that one soul, heaven, the, the heavens just, they celebrate. It's a shout of joy for just one soul. Amen. Now, Every Christian should work with all his might for his own sake. So we should do it as Christians for our own sake. Okay, don't think of it as, you know, a, a job or a task. It's something that we don't like to do. Okay, and it really doesn't matter if I go out and talk to this person because God will pick someone else and take him out there and, and he'll go ahead and, and save him. I don't have to do it. Why should I do it? Because I don't even know him. Okay, you're missing out on a blessing if you do that. If God sends someone your way and you just pass by like, you know, the Jews did to the Gentiles. I'm not going to talk to him because it's no concern of mine. Okay, we don't need to be like that. We are to be Christ-like. In, in Daniel chapter 12, verse 3. Now, this is the promise for the righteous. He says, those who are wise shall shine like the brightest of the firmament and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. So we will shine just as bright as all those stars. And it's, you know, every new soul that's won is a new jewel on the Savior's crown and a new jewel in our crown. Okay, you're saying, oh, so you are thinking about yourself and, and doing it for, for your own well-being. Well yes. It says to store our treasures in heaven, though. This is for God. And you know that when we get to heaven, we're going to take off our crowns. We're going to lay them at the feet of Jesus Christ, who is our King of kings and Lords of lords. Okay? So, now we turn to how. How do we do this? Every Christian should work with all his might for the salvation of the lost. But how? How do we do this? Number one, by prayer. Prayer is the, the, the most powerful thing, the powerful weapon we have. And it's a direct communication with God when we pray. Now, it, it all depends on how we pray, how you pray. Um, do you just you know, speak it frivolously, um, you know, just uh, willy-nilly anything? Or is it something specific? Is it something that is going to glorify God and lift him up? All right, that's what we have to look at. Praying for the lost is not only our duty toward the lost, but it is our first duty. We need to pray for the sinners. We need to pray for those in need. Just this past week, we prayed and prayed for, for three that just communicated with us and says, we need prayer. We need prayer now. And we pray for them constantly, constantly. Are we going to give up? No, because we know God is God. He is good, and he is here, and he listens to us. Where two or more are gathered in his name, okay, he is there in the midst, all right? So we can accomplish more in that way than in any other single way. We've seen miracles happen out of this place. I've said time and time again, miracles 
God's miracles coming out of this little church, okay, this little body. There are mega churches out there, and they're doing the same thing. But guess what? God works in every single church, every single person, every Christian that believes and has faith in him. He works just as much power as the, the strongest evangelist or the best speaking power pastor, you know. He works the same. It, it's all in prayer, okay? Now, by effort, prayer is the first thing, but not the only thing. Begin trying to lead men to Christ, okay? Lead them to Christ. Start. Just start the conversation. It doesn't matter. You know, it, it doesn't have to be something extravagant. It could just be something like a, a testimony of what God has done in your life. That's the easiest way to do it. Testify. Be a witness to the Lord, what he has done in your life. Something good. And just say, hallelujah, amen. And just talk. When you start talking about the good things that God does for you, and has done for you in the past, and who's going to do, okay? Expect good things, okay? Expect to be blessed. Share that with other people. And what are they going to do? They're going to want what you have. And so slowly but surely, they're going to come in. Some just jump right into it. Some, you know, just ask questions and, and they, they want to research it. And that's great because we meditate on God's word. I always tell people that, you know, it, if you're going to come, you know, come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, the best place to start is at the New Testament. The beginning of the New Testament where Jesus comes in, the good news, because Jesus is the good news. It's not just all the scripture. It is the life of Jesus that is the good news. And you learn about him and you focus on him. Okay, next we can do it by training. We must train for the work in order to do the best work. Yes, it's not something that we just throw ourselves into without, you know, studying the word or anything like that. And it doesn't take a degree. We, we don't need a degree from a college or a university to speak God's word. We don't have to do that. Go to your pastor. Go go to the uh, the, the lay minister, you know, someone that, that is strong in, in, in the word of the Lord and get with them. And they, they probably have a little class or something that, that you can go through to build up your confidence to, to help let the spirit flow through you. You know, because the, the spirit doesn't speak on his own behalf. He takes the word of God and flows through you. Amen. So that's what we need to do is to, to actually be trained in that so that we are ready. We're ready for whatever God has in store for us. Um, also, number four, seek and obtain God's power. We have to be looking for it at all times. We have to be looking for that power of the Holy Spirit that is flowing through us. Let the Holy Spirit in. Let him do the work. Okay, God is doing great things through the Holy Spirit and through you. So seek and obtain God's power. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, this is where Jesus' uh, final teaching and the final promise before his ascension, before he, he left us. He says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. With that power of the Holy Spirit that, that we've got, but we've also got to mimic Jesus. We've got to be more like Jesus daily, always studying God's word and being more and more like our Lord and Savior. Amen. And Acts, um, let me see. No, let's go to uh, Luke chapter 11, verse 13. Okay. Uh, this is where we pray with a childlike confidence. Okay. Because we have to be confident when we pray that when we pray, God is hearing us, that we know for a fact that God will take care of it because God loves us and we love God. And God is a, is a very giving God. Okay. He gave his own son for us. Okay, he's a very giving, loving God. Okay, but it says, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? 
Okay, that is a great gift. It's a, it, it's a good gift, a great gift, a marvelous gift, okay? It is the best thing that, that you can get from the Father because that Holy Spirit is going to work through you, and that is the power, the power of the Holy Spirit, which Jesus Christ had said, I'm giving it to you, okay? It's the power of the Spirit, okay? But we also have to be witnesses, and it does say that to be able to have testimony, to be a witness of what the Lord has done and is doing and is going to do in our lives. And be positive. You need to be filled with joy and joy comes from the Holy Spirit. Amen? So think about that. In Acts 2, um, verse 39, this is where Peter invites the multitude to come to Jesus, okay? It's gonna be a major altar call says, for the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Okay? These are the people, not just the Jews where they're at, but the Gentiles far off. Okay? Which they say, well, you know, they, they, they're stupid. They, they can't get the, the word. You know, we're not going to share it with them because, you know, they're, they're not worthy of it. They're, they're like dogs. No. Yes. He says that everybody is equal everybody and that the jew the gentile whichever one you are and you know heck, i got to admit gentile you know i'm not a jew i'm a gentile and there's billions of gentiles out there all right as well as jews but we're all one we're all the same members of the same body okay we have different parts but we're all in the same family Amen. And so it doesn't matter. It, it, Jew gets this. But in the same sense, the Gentile gets the same thing. Okay, nobody's different. Nobody gets anything any different because we are all created by God. That is what he wanted to get across to people also, is that everybody is created in his image. Amen. So, Last one, and, and I'm going to close after this, uh, in Acts chapter 5, verses 31 to 32. This is the testimony of the apostles before the Sanhedrin, okay? And so, you know, there, there's more, you know, in the front of this a couple of verses before, but I wanted to hit on these ones here, uh, where, where they say, In him, or him, God has exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses to these things. And so also in the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. We learn from the disciples who learn directly from Jesus Christ. And it's passed down from generation to generation in a book that has God's word. This, this is God's inspired word right here. All right. This hasn't changed. Now there are other parts or, or other trans, uh, uh, what is it? Um, transcription of different Bibles and, and things like that. Okay. Where some of them take out certain verses, you know, to, to have their own meaning and this and that. We got to be very careful about what we read. Okay, the, the closest things you're going to get are the King James Version and the New King James Version. Some go to an NIV, um, you know, it doesn't have everything, um, but it is an easy reading. You know, there are other ones out there that, that are easier to read, but always make sure that you've got a copy of the King James and the New King James so that you can always compare, go back and see what has been taken out or, you know, what has been added in or whatever it is. Okay, just to be careful about what you are teaching other people. The disciples right here, okay, each one of them walking with Christ are now sharing their words, their walking, their teachings. Okay, they're sharing it all with us so that we can mimic Jesus Christ and share it with others and make more disciples. That's why this book's been around for you know, so many thousands of years. I mean, it's, it's still a strong book. You know, some hate it, some love it. 
okay? The haters are going to have to deal with it because God's word is God's word and it'll, it'll always remain constant. Okay, every Christian man or woman here can have the power of the Holy Ghost, but you need to give yourself wholly to God 100%. When we pray, we need to do this, okay? When you give yourself wholly to God, you got to ask. That's our prayer. We ask. We ask for whatever it is, for healing, for financial uh, help, for strength, for confidence, um, for his power, his wisdom. You know, whatever it is that we pray for, we have to ask for it. We can't just expect it to be there. Number two, we need to believe what we are asking that God is listening and that God knows and that God is going to make good on whatever it is that, that you are asking for. Because, you know, it, it also says in, in, in the Bible, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be opened to you. Okay, but you got to ask. You got to ask first and believe it. Lastly, we need to claim it. Now, I know that you know, a lot of people don't claim something, but you know, I have my own testimony of claiming something. You know, we, we had a kids' church that, that wasn't put together. It was, you know, just two mobile homes and they weren't even together yet, but they were in a place, you know, they still needed to be set and everything. And we were having trouble with the with the county and stuff. And you know, we, we go through them things at times. And it was, you know, coming upon a year, and, and I, I just asked the pastor, can we go in there as a kid's church? Can we just step in it? And so, you know, he, he said, yeah, but, you know, shh. So we went in there, and we as a kid's church prayed over that building. We prayed over it, and we said, I love this building you have given us. It's all together, all, all uh, ready to go, and, you know, we're getting ready to have our service in here, and and all this, you know, and we're, we're seeing it as it's already built, it's already put together, and we thank God that it was already done, that the building was ready for us to move into, and it wasn't but the next week that the county released it, and it got put back, put together, uh, the fire department had passed it and everything, and we were in there having our kids church service and so that is is a testimony to God on claiming it being confident in what you are praying for being specific on what you're what you're asking the Lord to do because we have to be specific now the last part of this is to go to work okay we've asked we believed we claimed now it's time to go to work do God's business. Do God's work. He has called you into his ministry. It's not just a, a building like this with just little pockets of rooms and everybody has a place. This is God's ministry, and it's bigger than that. This is God we're talking about, by the way, so he's universal. So just a food for thought. And I pray that you uh, enjoyed God's word, that you found uh, something in it that you can get and use. Uh, some passages in the Bible that you could actually get into and read and meditate on and uh, always ask the Lord for wisdom as you read through his word so that he opens up the mysteries of his word in the way that you need to hear it the way that you need to see it and read it. Amen. Father God, I thank you for this time that you've given us today. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will always, always be with us. That you will always be helping us. Holy Spirit, I pray all the time that you guide us, that you comfort us with God's word. When we are down, we need encouragement also. We need to be lifted up. Whatever it is that, that we are going through today, Father God, those that are watching this video, those that are hearing it for the first time, those that are going to have it shared with them, 
the Lord open up their mind, open up their heart. Holy Spirit, speak to them what they need to hear to lift them up, to give them hope, to give them faith, to give them joy. Increase in their lives, Father God, and in all of us, increase in our spiritual walk with you. Increase in our finances, in our health, Father God, spiritual and physical, from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet. We love you, Lord, and we praise you, and we worship you, and we glorify you. We ask, Father God, that you put a hedge of protection around us as we head out into the missions field today, that you watch over each and every one of us, that you protect us from the fiery darts of the devil that always come our way. Be our shield, our strength. Wherever you are before us, nothing can be against us. I pray that you protect every church, every property, every Christian in this world, and that you heal our land, Father God. Send revival through the world. Let that spark ignite once again, Father God, this time for eternity. We ask this in your mighty name. Amen and amen. Well, I pray that you, you got something out of this and that you share it with somebody that God is putting in your path. And like I said, if you haven't done it already, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. That way you can receive God's word every week. I thank you for joining us today in the house of the Lord. Amen. And we'll see you next Sunday.